All right, full disclosure, I never intended to publish this video. I just intended to go out and film a little bit, learn my camera, get the settings correct, and then play around with some editing and just kind of leave it at that. Get a product that I was happy with, but not publish it. But after catching poor fish and hooking myself in the process, I had to publish it. So this is very rough. I mean, hell, there's a timestamp at the bottom for the entirety of the video that I filmed with the action camera. So that's going to be changed in future videos. And on the back end, the camera decided to clip everything into three minute segments. So editing was fun as well. Hope you enjoy it. And the title is 100% not clickbait. So you can see by the timestamp that it is June 1st, 2020, about 6.45 p.m., high tides around 8.30 on this day. Throwing a three-quarter ounce paddle tail. Oh, no! Saying, oh, no, because the lure flies off and splashes in the distance because the knot failed. So now I'm taking the boat over where I lost the lure. And you can tell by the water clarity that there's no way, even in the white confetti, that I'm going to find that Allegang paddle tail lure and jig head. So, lost that one. So you can see by the timestamp that a little over an hour has gone by. I'm going to throw this saltwater weighted jerk bait with a rattle in it because I had been using swim baits, paddle tails for the past hour with nothing. Hmm. First fish of the day, the first saltwater fish in the new boat. Could you be? What could you be? I'm saying what could you be because you bluefish are, are there uh, also and they'll hit this lure. I snagged a schoolie. Interesting. So I got a nice little schoolie like striped bass. Now. Snagged it, probably swiped at it. I caught right around the eye. That's not good. So I should mention as the fish falls off the lure that All I right. do not have my pliers on me. I realized it when I got to the boat ramp, I'm out, I'm out. and that's going to come into play later. A little head damage. That was no body. A little screwy. Later. Nice. First striper on the boat. First striper on the boat. Out there, man, they out there. All right, now I'm happy. Oh, that's the ticket, baby. Let's switch up those lures, kid. Nice. Nice. Now the question is, how in the F am I going to get this out? With no. This first, that's for damn sure. Don't stick me. I know now how stupid this is, but just watch and be entertained slash horrified. Don't 
Gotta be the middle one, too. Can you just, like, come on? Can you just, like... That could have been bad. All right, we got one out. And two. <laughs> Numero dos. Do it for the show. So while that fish was flopping around, the hook caught me on the index finger. So I'm taking some of this flexible rubber tape and fashioning myself a bandage. I got off easy this time. This time. So I'm back at it. I've been using a couple different retrievals, some constant, some intermittent. It seems like they're hitting it more on the pause. Like right there. Ooh, another one. Woo! Yeah, baby, jump. Jump. Come on. Uh, you don't want to jump again? You tired? Nice. The blue jerk bait, baby. All right. Oh. Well, that's one way to do it now, isn't it? Just break the line. Okay, fine. Be that way. Why gotta be like that? Why gotta be like that? and have this happen again. Okay. So I'm tying on a weighted treble hook to try to snag some bunker that I've seen busting, and no luck. So then I try this green spoon, which imitates the sand eels, and also no luck.
after all that time, I just go right back to the jerk bait. Ooh, I'm a pause. They like this more, man. Where are you? You might be a big one. Where are you? You're over there? I say big oh. one, like low slot. Oh. For a striped bass, 28 inches is the low end. The biggest I've caught to date is 26. You can't really see it right now, but that middle treble hook is wrapped in and around the fish's jaw. It's tangled up in there, so that's going to be the main problem that I have to address. Stop it. One handshake and the front treble hook is in my thumb. I immediately put the fish in between my legs and squeeze his head so therefore I can minimize the shaking, try to calm him down as I attempt to get the treble hook out. Right here I'm attempting to bite on the treble hook to pull it out of my finger and I am unsuccessful. It would be really helpful to have a pair of pliers. So from here on out I'm just going to let the video run. This is going to be the end of the fishing trip and the beginning of my hook extraction adventure.
So at this point, I'm trying to motor over to the shore because there were a bunch of guys that were congregating, talking, fishing, social distancing from what I could see. But my hope was that one of them maybe had a pair of pliers. Just noticed another boat in the harbor. I figure that's going to be a better bet for pliers than the shore. <laughs> that terrible sound you heard was me attempting to whistle with one hand while still keeping the fish calm between my legs and trying to turn the boat. So this is a new skill that I picked up over lockdown that evidently I still need to practice. I was voted loudest in my high school, so I just resort to what I know. No, 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 no fish. No. No fish. No, you Don't shake your head. Excuse me! Excuse me! Do you have pliers? Do you have pliers? Do you have pliers? Yeah, I got stuck by a fish. I got to cut it loose. Thank you. I'm trying to keep it from shaking its head so it doesn't tear my finger apart. Uh, I would prefer if you came to me, I'm sorry. Thank God for swivel chairs. Don't you move. Don't you move. <sighs> Sorry. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, I've been better. Oh, it's in my finger. Yeah. Do you have... I do, but do you have do you have any that have clips on them? Do you have any that has like wire cutters, anything? I mean, I just want to cut the hook at not out of my finger, but just cut it at my finger so I can get it out. I mean, I can try to use I can try to use this to get the fish out. Huh? Uh, right now, yes. Yeah. I mean, you got a knife? I can just cut. I can cut his lip. He's gonna die either way. I'm just saying, you got a knife or anything? If I can get the fish loose, then I'll feel at least I can move around. 
and then I can get back to my car and I mean I actually don't have anything on my car but at least I can get somewhere You move stuff off the boat and then you forget it at home. You don't realize until you need it. You're like, shit, where are the pliers? <laughs> are you Kevin? Yeah. <laughs> I'm Adam. Yeah. Did you hold the boat just so that way I don't drift? So what I'm doing here is just trying to cut the fish's lip from the treble hook. So I can separate the fish and stop worrying about Thank every you. head shake. Well, just gotta figure out what to do from here. You at the boat ramp or you're at the dock? I'm at port five. Oh, okay. Now let's see if we can get some fish. That might be interesting. Maybe we survive worse. Uh of minutes. I mean, with the stress, I wish it was 28. Then at least I wouldn't feel guilty. No, thankfully. I mean, I had him pretty, I had him squeezed pretty well between my legs. The last thing I needed was Yeah? So the messed up thing about Connecticut is even if the fish yeah, dies while you're trying to get the hook out, you still have to release it. You cannot keep anything under 28 yes, or over 35. Hey man, thank you very much for at least the okay. knife. Okay. Woo! All right. That's the first for everything. All right, All right man. You, you know, you, your car, you're just tied up to the dock at Port 5. Uh, my car's over there. Oh. So I got to get it on the trailer and the whole nine yards. Probably call the wife to come down. So this guy, home. Kevin, was awesome. He, after my GoPro dies, he drove over to where my car was and gave me a pair of Y cutters. And I cut the lure and then I cut uh, the treble hook so it wasn't it'll just make it so, a little bit so protruding for my drive home. This out? Yeah. All right. So this is the first time I've even attempted to film on my boat and I wasn't expecting anything crazy to happen. I was just expecting maybe to catch like two fish. Turns out I caught five fish and on the fifth fish. Oh yeah. Can you see that? That is a hook in my thumb. Oh yeah. So I do not want to go to the hospital right now. Bridgeport hospital is like an epicenter for COVID, it's, I don't want to go, all right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt to push this remnants of a treble hook through my finger so that I can just go to the urgent care clinic tomorrow morning when they open and get a tetanus shot. So let's see how this goes. I think it actually lived too for the amount of time it was out of the water and the fact that I had to like cut his jaw off. All right, let's see. What?
and out. Look at that. Not even a lot of blood. And you thought you were going to have to go to the emergency room. Well, I mean, I thought I was going to have to go to the emergency room. That wasn't bad at all. So this is the aftermath. Just a little bit of blood. And this is why you don't put your sh in a bucket and then leave it here without all of your accoutrement. One pair of pliers, two pairs of pliers. Stupid. Well, you know what? I'm not gonna let that happen again. So it's the next day and went to the urgent care clinic this morning, first thing, got a tetanus shot, got antibiotics. I'm not worried about it. I'm sure it'll be fine. I got the hook out nice and clean, no damage done. It's a little sore, but no real damage or anything. So thanks for watching the video. Hope you found it entertaining. The next ones will probably be less injury and better quality. So like, comment, and subscribe. See you next time.